Welcome to our first lesson in part one. It's all about sequences of numbers. For example, suppose I asked you, what's the next number in the sequence? 2, 5, 8, 11, 14, something. Now, uh, I guess the most intelligent thing to say is we notice, well, the numbers seem to go up by 3, up by 3, up by 3, up by 3. So an educated guess would be maybe that pattern will continue. And if we believe in patterns, we would then say another up by 3 to give me 17. So what we notice here is that we took the differences, the first difference of the sequence, we've got a constant value, constant value of 3. And that helped us figure out that the final value should be 17. If we're choosing the game, play the game, let's believe in patterns. Now a sequence with constant first differences, here's the first difference, are called linear sequences. And it kind of makes sense. If I was to actually plot this, this sequence 2, 5, 8, 11 on a graph somehow, so here's a little graph. 1, 2, the first number, second number, third number, fourth number, fifth number. First number is 2, go over 1, gives the next number is 5, that's 1 over 1, up 3. Uh, the third number is 8, which is over another 1 and up another 3. Next number is 11, and so on. It's not surprising, we get a nice linear picture. So a graph with constant first differences is called linear. But of course, not all sequences are going to be this nice. For example, let me change color. I'll bend down, excuse me for a moment. Look at the sequence, say, 2, 3, 6, 11, 18, 27, 36, and so on. Bad board technique, here goes. Um, first differences, are they constant? No, 2 to 3 is up 1, up 3, up 5, up 7, up 9, up 11, and so on. Well, they're not constant. I can see a pattern, though, but if I'm a little slow, maybe I can't. I can take the differences again. 2, 2, 2, 2, 2. It's the second differences that are now constant. If I'm going to play the game of believing in patterns, I'll probably guess the next number in the second, second difference row is 2, which means the number in the previous row must have been 13, and the next number in the next one must be, I don't know, was that 49 or something. So if we're playing the game of believing the patterns, noticing constant differences can be very helpful. Let me clean my board and I'll come back to this some more. Now, of course, some sequences can be quite complicated, but if we're going to play the game of believing in patterns, maybe we can still find structure to them. For example, look at the sequence 0, 16, 50, 108, 196, 320, and so on. <sighs> can I make an educated guess, if I trust patterns, about what the next number shall be? Well, if I take the first differences, I get uh, up 16. 16 to 50, I believe, is up 34. 50 to uh, 108 is 58. 108 to 96, oh gosh, is 88. 196 to 320 is uh, 146, I think. Okay, 16 to 18, 34 is up 18. 34 to 18 is up uh, uh, 24. Then we're up 30. Then we're up 36. So oh, looking good. 6, 6, 6. If I trust patterns, I guess it keeps going 6. Or if I want to be a little slow, I can say, I can keep going. Difference of 0, difference of 0, difference of 0, difference of 0, da, 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 and so on. All right, I bet I could uh, now work my way back up to the top and uh, figure out the next numbers in the sequence if I played the game believing in patterns. But notice here, it wasn't the first difference that was constant or the second, it was the third differences that were constant. Third differences are the first set of constants we have. People like to call the numbers at the beginning the leading diagonal of this difference table, if you like. Because actually, once you've got the leading diagonal, it contains all the information about the entire table. And let me explain what I mean by that. Um, I'm going to clean my board again, and I'll give an example, and we'll see what the leading diagonal tells for us. So here's a difference table, and all I've given you is the information on the leading diagonal. Do we indeed know the entire table? Well, yeah. The original sequence at the top begins with a 1, and apparently it goes up by nothing to get to the next number. So 1 plus 0 is 1, so the next number must be 1. Can we fill in anything else? Well, look at the second differences. 0 must go up by 2 to get to the next number in that, that second row. That must be a 2, which tells me 1 goes up by 2 to be a 3 up on the top row. Uh, working down, 2 must go up by 4 to give me 6, which means 2 must go up by 6 to give me 8. 3 must go up by 8 to give me 11, and so on. And you see, we can actually build up the whole table this way. But the point of this, and off we go, is that to know the leading diagonal of a, of a particular pattern is to know everything about that structure of that pattern. So our job now is to get to know some very common leading diagonals. That's the next lesson. So your job now is to actually read through the text that follows this video. This was just a very brief overview. Maybe watch this video again. It helps to make some sense of the text. Lots of practice problems for you to work on. So really read the text with pencil and paper in hand. Watch this video a few more times if you need, and off you go. All will fall into place. Lots of fun.